Welcome back to the Lineit Lab. My name is Peter O'Donnell. Recently, I hosted a webinar where I focused on red zone stroke goal line defense. Um, and this is a short snippet video of some of that discussion that I went through. If you'd like to get access to the full video, feel free to get in contact with me. And uh, I'll also be doing a follow up video where I look at uh, various solutions and whatnot. So hope you enjoy. Try then. Okay. So again, sorry, Leinster fans, uh, and, and well, I suppose, and again, all the Bulls fans you might probably enjoying this one, hopefully. Um, but with this, what I like about this is that Leinster actually trying to defend the middle and middle back. And this is the first trend that I spoke about how the teams are now able to get around the corner. Uh, once they kind of get in behind you, they're able to build momentum, get in the front foot, front foot, and then ultimately uh, get over get over the line. Okay, so um, that's one of the things that I, I, I really like about this particular play is that Leinster are defending with the scrum half the front. And as I say, it's, it, it, it's very difficult, even with, the, with the Josh van der Feer there as the first defender back. Once teams are around the corner, it's very, very hard to stop. Okay, and here's just a good replay of it here as well. You can see the angles of it as well, how, how hard it is for seven here. So the scrum half is at the front. Again, once they're around the corner, they're into them, they're on the front foot. So hard to defend that. Yeah, a little, a little bit of luck involved in this one in terms of it's just popped out of the rook. Um, but I think ultimately they were Leinster under a lot of pressure. Okay, so again, there are obviously some of the, the threatening aspects to it. If we put us come off the front, here's some of the strengths to it, potentially. Um, the, the big thing you see with this one is they've got France have their front row here in one, two, three. Okay, there's your front row. Interesting as well in terms of where they position the extra back in the blind side. Um, and they've only got one person here in the channel. Um, but I, I suppose it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter too much because the French are massive and they just hit this with a lot of venom. So happy to give the front, which obviously is a big thing, and that's one of the rationale for putting the front, the scrum at the front that you can just absolutely smash it. Um, and but here they do an absolutely brilliant job of of uh of um putting Ireland under pressure and nearly and nearly win the ball. I think Ireland just about won it, but um, stayed out of touch, but only just so. See that are quite happy to give a free throw to the front, but with the impact and the weight that they're hitting with, uh, makes it very, very hard for Ireland. Okay. And the French, the French are at it again here. Something sl slightly different. I just wanted to show this because same, well, sorry, same setup. This is last last year or this year, I should say last season. All right. Although they just go for a slightly different tactic or similar tactic, but they're trying to dismantle dismantle them all in, in, in by getting rid of piece by piece. And it's not necessarily about they were they are obviously trying to drive it towards the touchline, but if we watch it, they're they're really just trying to take out a take out a lifter, take out a blocker, even if it's just two v one. Happy to sacrifice because they're going to break it up. So happy to take out this extra banker here at the back. Okay. So happy to take take out one of these guys because that's going to have an impact, even if they're if they're front shifting, they're just trying to get in. Make make it make it difficult. Take out two, take out two here at the front. You can see the backs are happy to get involved. Then it just becomes an absolute mess. All right. So uh, that's one of my favorite ones in the re in, in recent times. Um, you might have an initial plan, but then it's how you adapt. Um, and what are you doing is that second, that second and third uh go, so to speak, um, or in that second line potentially. Okay. And then but then we've Again, South Africa, I think, are very good. They're a really good example to follow because they're very aggressive in the air. So that's one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game. They're quite happy to give the front. You can see the scrum half here at the front of the line out. They're quite happy to give you that. Um, but what they do here is the uh, Lions do pretty well to win the ball in the, in, the, in the middle back space. But they're quite happy to jump across. You can see there and make it makes it so disruptive. So even though they're competing in the air, and if they don't win it, we just watch four and let's watch four at the front. And notice where he goes. He's getting into the second line in terms of the mall attack, and he's pulling it. You could argue it's a penalty. It's definitely a penalty. In fact, we watch seven. So he doesn't win it. He get he's trying to get into the gap. They both jumped across, so it is a penalty. Um, but then he he falls on the ground. He's quite happy to fall on the ground. Okay, ref doesn't ref doesn't pick it up. So you're a, not aggression, but your your the mindset of of being um of not necessarily going for the side is what I'm thinking of it. You know, you're taking a risk, but the risks can often pay off. 
um, especially at line of time. It's, it's, it's seldom that a referee will necessarily penalize a yellow straight away in that scenario. And um, they do, but you don't see it straight away. And then you get a penalty, kick to the corner, go again, they tap and go. But teams are quite, some teams are quite happy to, to give that up. Now, in the last couple of years, when we've seen more free kicks being or tap penalties being taken, that's making it obviously a lot more interesting, I think, in terms of the game. Um, and maybe where teams maybe are, are going to be more, keep their discipline more. Um, so there's that, that that scenario. Um, that's our, this, I suppose, that scenario where South Africa in particular are putting the scrum half to the front. So this to this this one today to, to to this day I still don't know how 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 Ireland scored this one because there's not a huge amount they did wrong uh, South Africa. The one thing I'd probably say is that could Bismarck Duplessis have hit it a bit earlier? That's probably one thing I, I would maybe have suggested. If you watch him here, he holds initially. Could he have maybe hit here? Uh, would that have maybe done, done made made any difference? I get this. I've, this has come up recently as well. If you watch the eight in terms of where he goes and his positioning, is he from the side? And it's one. It is. It is a good option. And again, it's in terms of solutions. We'll talk more about this next week. So this man here, you notice how a lot. A lot of teams are doing this at the moment. Is that defensively they're quite happy to bind? He's bound on the guy inside him, and but you can see the angle he hits that, and he hits into the second line. He hits at the tight burn. Like I mean, it's pretty much a penalty. I mean, he's not. He's not square at all in terms of his entries. That it's absolutely a penalty. But. But in, but it, teams are getting away with it a lot. Um, so you'd have to say in terms of South Africa, like give it, give a free throw to the front, put a scrum half at the front of the line out, and smash into it like Stinkham does there, and then everyone else just hammer into it and try and drive it towards the touchline. You'd have to say that they didn't do a bad job. I just don't know how Josh Vanderveer scored that. I mean, it's very unusual that that it, that it did. You can see he just about got it in. And um, if we uh, played on this example here, we kind of you get a look at it. So it was really well done by Ireland. I, I, I just I don't know how. How we did it, how we got the ball down. So structurally, I think that was okay. Um, but there's obviously downsides down to, to the bottom at the front of the line. And the big threats, the big threats really are that back peel and the maul, maul in the middle and the tail. If you if they maul at the back, you could be exposed. If you maul at the front, you could be exposed, uh, or in the middle, I should say. And even if you maul at the maul at the front as well, um you pretend, potentially could be, as we just saw there with Ireland. Okay, so maybe if you, as you look at this clip, you can notice they've got the scrum half and blindside winger in the channel. If you're going to go with a scrum half, it is, as I said, something I'll talk more about next week, but is it a consideration where you maybe do you need to put another forward uh, in it where nine is? Maybe something to consider if you're worried about that mall or shift drives toward the front or, you know, like Ireland being very happy to 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 to, um, to shift or add weight on, on the blindside edge. You can see the try they scored against Scotland in the last World Cup Um that's exactly what they did, except it was a bit more of a shift drive in that one versus the one they did against South Africa. There, like they just added a bit more weight, really. Whereas it was similar against South Africa uh, against Scotland in the last World Cup, but uh, and they only just about got over. But um, but it's it, it can it can be risky, and um, and I suppose that's one of the other things to bear in mind. So if you're happy to give up backfield, that could be this could be a good setup for you. But the one big thing is like Leinster were looking to compete in the middle and back here, and they didn't get up, and the the, the Bulls have won the ball at the back. And that, again, going back to the very first question, do you compete or do you stay down? Because if you stay down, you might be in a better position to deal with it in terms of this. If you compete, you're stretched and you're under pressure. So we need to rethink rethink that. Okay, so the opposition you're playing against, are they happy to go to the tail in this area? Some teams aren't. Some teams are happy to just win the ball in the middle of front and take their chances. And then, you, then, you, then, we, can, then we can look at other considerations. Um, so if there's any thoughts, any questions, we can... We can, we can you can jump in there, otherwise I'm going to jump on to Scrum Half in the Middle. Thanks for watching so far, guys. I just want to take 30 seconds to talk about a couple of exciting new ventures that I'm, I'm embarking on. The first is a series of online programs that I'm about to launch, which I'm really excited about. Really innovative, different than anything else I've seen out there. Largely because they're going to be highly interactive and run over a 12-week period. Um, the first uh, or the first two are based around line out throwing in the mall, and then the third one is going to be on building a line out. So this is for coaches, could be for players as well, but it is specifically for coaches. Um, online, really good CPD opportunity, very detailed, um, and with loads of challenges in there. So if you're interested in this, just I'll add, a, add a link in the email I send you, and you can just drop your email in to, to get more information, and I'm happy to put a phone call in, and we can talk about it a bit further. But really excited about that. The second then is linked to my Patreon subscription, where I've just launched two um two new levels aimed for direct well any rugby coach um or player 
but particularly for heads of rugby or directors of rugby, where you want to use CPD tools to, to give to your, your team of coaches. Um, the first is based on a monthly lecture that I'll do on, on a particular topic of the game. You'll also get uh, the um, uh, um, videos and content that I get in my previous level, which is a weekly video, um, or two, two, one large week, weekly video or two smaller pieces of content. Um, so that's the first one. And the second tier then is, is more technical and detailed around the coaching. So the first one, the lecture one, is more based on an analysis or discussion or topic or trends in the game. Um, plus the technical stuff you get in the previous, um, the previous tier. And, but this one is specifically with coaching in mind, how you coach a particular aspect, things to look for, um, and a lot more meat on the bone with regards to particular aspects. So um, I'll be in touch regarding those, but if you're interested in more uh, information on those two aspects, feel free to, to reach out to me. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Back into the content. Cool. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Um, again, the difference in this one is the five plus one lineup, um, and Japan get over a nice try here. And I like their little, their their change in setups and, and and then movements and whatnot. Okay, so again, I'm sure some of you have, have seen this, and it's a, it's variations like this are, I'm sure you've probably all seen them. They're they're in the game, massively in the they're massively in the game at the moment. Um, so we need to consider then what are the rest of us doing if if. I remember when I first started putting my scrum half here, I can't remember exactly when, but when I first started defending my scrum half here with a view to hitting them all hard in here, uh, it, well, anywhere, it does leave other things exposed. So these men need to think about their role. If it's, if, 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 um, you know, if the ball is one at the back, what are these guys doing? If the ball is one at the front, what are the last two guys doing? It frees up this man to hit, but I think some teams overcommit um in terms of defensively i think sometimes overcommit uh to the mall and and they get exposed on the peel and then if the ball is one like in this instance one ball is one in the middle so we've got four guys that are around plus your plus one does this last guy need to go in straight away does he need to go in straight away what's the awareness and the communication like for players to say there's a peel coming all right so yes there might be an animation coming down the blind side but we also have two players here that should be able to deal with the blind side so i'm always amazed in the on the plays where um, you know, people worry about the two. Let's say you might have a nine and a fourteen, or a blindside wing that are, that are sweeping back down the blind side. Um, you, I think you often don't need to like here we have here. You don't we don't need to worry about it. We've got two guys that can deal with that. All right. Um, it frees up this guy. Is he, are we going negative to negative? Um, like I'm I'm, I'm terminology like a rook defense. So is he going from the negative to the, to the open side? But really, does that last guy need to, in the line need to compete so early if we have one, two, three, four, plus one hitting straight away. And it is a five plus one lineup. So if it was a six plus one, there's different considerations on that. Thanks for watching. If you'd like access to the full video, feel free to reach out and I can send you the link, no problem. Otherwise, if you're interested in the upcoming online programs that I'm running, feel free to click on the link that I'll put in the um, description of this video and uh, you'll be able to join the waiting list for when these programs go live. So otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you like the content.